bienvenidos a su programa Opera en tu Sofá. Welcome, friends. Today we are honored to have a big star with us, our star, Angel Blue. You will remember that Angel was our. Uh, uh, you, you sang in, uh, let me remember this, Turandot? Yes. In Turandot, where, yes. Yeah, so you were a big star in Turandot. And, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, I was blanking because I was watching your videos of Bohem. I was like, no, she was not our Mimi. She was in Turandot. <laughs> anyway, so welcome, Angel. Uh, happy to have you with us. Muchas gracias por invitarme aquí. Ay, qué linda. <laughs> how are you? How are you? How are you? Um, I'm well, I'm, I'm happy, I'm blessed, I'm thankful. It's, I'm in New Jersey, that's where I live, and it's snowing today, so I'm very happy. You could see the snow, but I, I had to close my window because it was a very bad backlighting, you know, okay. but I'm okay. doing very well. Thank you very much for asking me. So what is this Californian girl doing in New Jersey? Uh, well, you know, I moved to New Jersey, um, Well, I should say we moved to New Jersey, my husband, my stepson, and myself. We've been here for just a little bit over a year. And I came because I was never in California, just never. My mom and my brother, my sisters, everybody's in California My from my immediate family, uh, the Blue family. But um, I was never there. And my husband's family actually also, um, they're also in California. But because of my job, I was always sort of either in Europe or on the East Coast. And I said to my husband in 2018, I said, I'm never home. I'm, I never see you. And 2019 was the last straw for me because I, I, I slept in my bed for 56 nights in, oh in California, 56 nights. And so I said to him in, 20, in 2018, I said, we should move. And he said, okay. And so 2019 just proved that I was never home. And I was always on the East Coast, either in New York or Washington, D.C. or Boston or, you know, um, always going to, to Germany and Italy. So I said, let's move. And he said, okay. So that's why we're here. Okay. <laughs> long, long answer. Sorry. No, that's fine. Listen, uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and uh you know being you 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 being a californian and uh how you started singing what schools you went to you know like or and a, a little bit maybe some something that you want to share with us yes so well i first of all i love being from california i take that very seriously because i think that <clears throat> excuse me in the world of opera I don't know that California is really looked at as being um, a, 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 like the central place for a opera. Hub, a hub. A hub, thank you, yes. I don't think it's really looked at as being a hub for opera. And I, I love that I'm from a place that's small. I'm from Apple Valley, which is about three hours from San Diego, even though I still consider San Diego kind of home because I think anything in Southern California, I consider at home. Yeah. But what I love about being from California is that as an opera singer, as an international opera singer, I've been able to take what I learned in California with me out into the world. You know, I'm a former beauty queen. I did beauty pageants. And I think all of the things that I learned in pageantry has helped me in opera. I went to UCLA. I think the things that I learned at UCLA helped me as, as an opera, has helped me as an opera singer as I've traveled. Um, of course, I was in the Los Angeles Opera Young Artist Program. And of course, that helped me as an opera singer. I was studying opera, you know, but I, I, I love being from this place where people don't associate opera with it and being able to say that I'm a product of that place is very important to me, you know? Yeah, you know, uh, so I, uh, I, you have this openness and this just easy going, always smiling like sunshine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I also would say that there is a hub in California for opera. Yes. I mean, maybe the East Coast are, is not very aware, but I think it's, it, it, I think it's moving. I think uh, now people are more aware. That yes, for sure. Of opera happening in California. Yes, 
Yes, I, I agree with that. I do believe there, there is a hub for opera there. Um, I think when I, was, when I was studying, especially, I mean, I, I can't say, of course, that there isn't one because I've been invited to sing at these hubs. <laughs> I've been invited to sing at San Diego, at Los Angeles Opera, and, um, and also with San Francisco Opera. So, I mean, for sure, there, there are places to perform there. Um, and if I may say so, I mean, I know that I was a, a product of LA Opera, but I mean, these are not small companies. These are great big A houses to sing in, you know, all, all three of them that I just named. So I find that, I just find that being from a place that is, um, I would say maybe not heavily associated with it. I like that. When you speak about being open, um, I don't know that that's because I'm from California. I think that's just because I'm my parents' daughter. And I think that's how I was raised. I think it's, you know, my, my father, I, I wish he was still alive so that people, as people get to know me, I wish they could know him because I'm a lot, I believe, I like to think anyway, that I'm a lot like him. He was one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And I don't say that just because I'm his daughter. I say that because it's true. He was yeah. such a nice man he, and he got along with everybody, you know? And, and I, I really believe that had I been born in Cleveland, Ohio, where my mom is from, or Preco, Alabama, where my dad is from, or, you know, or Mississippi, where my grandmother is from, I imagine I still would have the same outlook on life because I was raised by these people who were so, just insanely um, positive and kind folks. <laughs> nice. Yeah, you know, you transpire that. Um, you know what? Why don't we go ahead and listen to your singing? Because I know that everybody's dying for to, to do this. And uh, the first thing we're going to hear is uh, your Mimi. Okay. And uh, let's, let's do that. Okay. I don't know. Wow. So listen, we just did Bohem and this, your interpretation is really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So Angel, uh, let's talk a little bit. I'm going to uh, ask you three questions. You're going to answer them in the order that you would prefer. And I would like to ask you about who are your icons in, in, in opera and, and in pop or in, you know, singers. Um, also, I would like you to describe your voice 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and to talk about your teachers. So these are these is are these are the three questions. So okay. Take the, the one that you want. Um hmm. I would say, okay, so the first one I'll answer is. Oh, that's those are great questions. I have to say, those are really great. I'm, they make me think. Um, I, I, I'll describe my voice first. Um, I think my voice is a continuation of me. I think my voice is happy. I think my voice is joyful. I think my voice is open. I believe that in terms of sound, I feel like my voice is is really just my spirit speaking to people. And by, by that, with, in regards to sound, I think that it's just um, something that wants to, to make other people feel good about their life, about themselves, about our situation, um, you know, just being human beings. I don't know that I can really, sorry? Oh, you're a sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I would love, I would love to be considered sun, like, like sunshine. I, I like sunshine. So that's good. Um, but I, I think that just in terms of my voice, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I have, of course, I can talk about technique and, and what I'm thinking when I'm singing, how I've studied and such, but I, I, for myself, singing is, a, is really truly a continuation of me as a person. Mm -hmm. And that continuation is, I hope, an expression of just, like I said, an expression of joy, an expression of hope and comfort. I hope that when people hear me sing, that they that they feel me hugging them. Um, we do, we do. I must say. <laughs> thank you. When I think of um, uh, icons and teachers, I have to answer that together, because I, I mean, of course, I would. I, I obviously I like Leontine Price. <laughs> She's all over my, my study. So I have Le Leontine Price here. I have my voice teacher, Vladimir Chernoff there, my dad. I have a, a picture of Maestro Domingo here, but it's, it's actually, if I turn my camera around, you can see it because it's hanging on the wall. It's a poster um, of me and uh, Maestro Domingo, Eugene Cohn, and Mikaela Usta all singing together um, in Croatia in 2011. Um, my icons in opera, Leontine Price would be the first one because, not because she's a black singer, because she's African American, uh, because I think she embodies what I hope my, I want my body, my, my singing to embody. Um, when you hear her sing, it's like she's taking, she uses her voice to express her feelings. She uses her voice to express things that perhaps she couldn't say at the time, um, things that maybe she's never said. Um, I don't know. I feel like when I listen to her sing, I, I, I feel everything. I, I, whatever emotion it is that she's experiencing in that moment, I also feel. I also, um, when I listen to her, I, I hear a great deal of, of hard work and I like that. Um, she's one of my icons. Another icon for me has been my dad, my father, Sylvester Blue. He, you might not be able to see him so well, but that's my dad. And um, he introduced me to opera. I was four years old. Yes, I was four years old and my dad introduced me to opera and he and my mom took me to see Turandot actually, which was my first opera. And well, it was a concert, but it was my first opera. And he always encouraged me to sing. And I told him that I wanted to sing and he never discouraged me in any way, never. He never said, you know, you're too loud or stop singing or we're trying to go to sleep or, or any of that. He always, just always seemed to be encouraging me to learn more. So because of my dad, I have this love for opera, but I understand that the love that I have for it is mine. It has, over time, it has really become my love. And it's, it's less about my father and, and the relationship I have with him because of opera, mm -hmm. but it's more about what opera does for me. And I appreciate my dad for that. He will always be the legacy of, of, of opera for me. Which brings me to my last icon. I mean, I, I have many, but my last icon, who I also consider my teacher, and that's, well, maybe I have two more icons, um, and that's Placido Domingo, because Maestro Domingo, um, my, th this is a very crazy story, but it's true. My dad, he died on December 31st of 2006. And 
the entire year of 2006, I kept telling my dad, the Los Angeles Opera had just started this program, the Los Angeles um, Opera Young Artist Program. Yeah. And yeah. several of my friends from UCLA auditioned and they all got in. And I got in, but I got in on like a probationary period, like, um, what do you call that? Like I was an intern is what they called me. And I was so distraught because I wasn't in the program with every, I wasn't officially there. Like I would go to the website and my name wasn't on the website. And I so desperately wanted to be on the website. And I so desperately wanted to meet Placido Domingo. And when I was a little girl, like in 1994, my dad, the three tenors came to LA. I believe it was 94. It might've been 93, but the three tenors came to, um, I don't remember what, what stadium it was. Oh, I don't remember. The what. one in USC, I re kind of remember. I, I want to say it was, I, I think it's called the Coliseum, yeah. I believe. Yeah. I think, I want to say the same thing, that it was at USC, but, you know, I remember I was like nine or 10 years old, and I just remember my dad was so excited, and he wanted to get tickets, and he's like, you know, we're all going to go, but we're a big family. We're like seven people, you know, and uh, it, it happened that um, we weren't able to go because of the ticket prices and all of that. But I always heard my dad talk about Placido Domingo. He always talked about how Placido was a good musician and how, you know, he said, Angel, you want to be like that. You want to be able to play the piano. Um, you want to be able to sing. He said, Placido Domingo is so good, Angel, he can conduct an orchestra. <laughs> that's what my dad said to me. You know, and for me, that's just like over my head. But I always heard him talk about the three tenors. And the same with Lee and Team Price and UC Brewerling and all these wonderful singers from the past, Beard Nielsen, Franco Corelli. He loved everybody, Mario Lanza, all of them. And uh, what's fascinating is in 2006, um, I was so upset that I wasn't in the program. And I kept saying, I, I, if I could just sing for Domingo, if I could just sing for Domingo. And so my dad said, he said, you just keep working, keep practicing. And when he hears you, Angel, he's going to love you. And that happened. And that happened. And I'm so sorry, I'm so long-winded, but it happened. I, I, and the, the, the sad part about it is when I sang for Maestro Domingo, my, my dad said, when you sing for him, just be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. Sing with, you know, always singers are told to sing with their voice. And he said, just go in and enjoy yourself and sing. And he's going to like you. He'll, he's going to put you in his program. Just watch. You watch and see. And I said, okay. So my dad passed away on December 31st of 06, 2006, two months later, it was either two or three months, I don't remember the exact date, but I met Maestro Domingo and I sang for him and he said, I love you. You know how Maestro is, he's like, he, he like doesn't talk loud, you know, he's not loud and boisterous like me. And he says, um, he says, I love your voice. You have such a beautiful voice. I love you. I would love to work with you. And he says, would you like to be in my program? Wow. And I remember leaving the, the, you know, I left the, um, the LA opera, I left the opera house and I was walking on Grand Avenue, which is the main street there. And I had my cell phone in my hand and all I wanted to do was call my dad and tell him wow. and I couldn't, yeah. you know, but these are icons. Icons are people, I'm sorry if I'm talking so much, icons are people who, who touch you that maybe, you know, I'm very blessed. I, I have the opportunity to meet Maestro Domingo. I've had the opportunity to travel around the world with Maestro Domingo. I have, I'm on my fourth passport. A large part of that is because I was singing with him from 2011 to 2017 or something all over the world. And I have him to thank for that. Very few people actually get to meet the icons, the people who have who have encouraged them, very few people. I've never met Lee and Team Price, but I got to meet Placido Domingo and share the stage with him. And That's so- wonderful. I know that yeah. you won Operalia, I think. Yes. And, and I think that's a very big moment in your career where everybody was like, who is this singer? You know, who, where, who is she? And yes. uh, I, 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 me, myself, I remember that when I heard you. Um, so, that's incredible. Listen, let's go on and, and hear you sing. And now Thank she's going to sing in Spanish, folks. Uh oh. You are. And you're going to sing uh, El Niño Jesús. Is this true? Uh, el Niño Judio. El, el Niño Judio. Yo creo que es, es El Niño Judio, sí. El Niño Judio. De España vengo, ¿no? De España vengo. Okay, let's listen to you.
madrileño me vuelve loca y cuando yo me arranco con una toca a la acento gitano de mi canción como en vida las flores de mi montón como en vida las flores de mi It's impeccable. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, ole, I would say. Ole. <laughs> ole. So uh, we're coming to the end of the program. And uh, before we, we say goodbye to everybody, I would like you, if you, you would like to add something, a comment, or you want to share something, and then we will say goodbye. Yes, I, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me to be on this show and for the interview. Thank you for your time. And um, I love San Diego Opera and I hope to see everyone soon. I, unfortunately, I wasn't able to come uh, for Mimi for personal reasons, but I, I do appreciate the company so much. I, I love the relationship that I have with San Diego Opera and I hope that we continue you know, for years and years to come because as I said, it's true, it's my home. I may not be from San Diego, but it is my home. I, I appreciate that uh, 
that at this time San Diego Opera is keeping this art form alive. I greatly appreciate that so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure we will have you back and it's a joy to have you and thank you for sharing your sunshine with you with <laughs> us. Uh, and thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you for being in the program for listening for being present and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Ciao, Angel. Thank you. Oh, bye.